Got you. So how's it going? You're back in New Zealand? Yeah, bro. I'm back in uh back in Wellington, man. Uh, I I uh, went to fly home the day before, and I, I was in uh, Melbourne with uh, John Paul, and um, I went to the airport. He dropped me off at night. Uh, I went to check in, and there was there was like you know, there's no reservation for you. I was like, oh, what's going on? And I looked at my ticket, and I booked out of the wrong airport. Oh, really? So I had to. Yeah, bro. So I had to fly home like the next day. Like I had to rebook a completely new flight. Oh, that's yeah, it was annoying, bro. But yeah, got home in the end. <laughs> as long as you're back, how was it down? I was wondering, like, what is the powerlifting climate? I guess you could say, like, down there. Like, is it big? How popular is it? Um, it's certainly growing, man. So, like, in New Zealand, it's pretty quiet. Like, it's it's not huge. Um. There's definitely a, there might be like two, 250 lifters at most at nationals. Like that would be huge, I think. But in Australia, it's actually, it's way bigger, right? Like three three times the amount of lifters in Australia, just like competitions all the time. Um, everyone knows everyone, like everyone like associates uh, with each other. They've got a real good community there. So it's definitely bigger in Australia than, than New Zealand. I got gotcha. you. So do you compete mostly in Australia? Like, I know you just competed there the other week. Yeah. Um, man, I, I haven't competed in New Zealand since it would be March 2014. Oh, wow. <laughs> that's almost three years, or more than three years. Yeah, man. It's been a, it's been a long time. And that's just because um, pretty much, like, all the comps that I do, like, they're pretty much, like, the IPF Worlds is always the main one I'm looking to do. And then, like, other bigger comps, like, say, there's Oceania's or something like that, that's always, it's never really held in New Zealand. And then all those other ones I do in Australia, they invite me over to lift it because they're, like, they're international events, so you can break world records at them, etc. Yeah. And, like, they normally fly me over, like, so they pay for me to stay for a few nights, and they fly me over, you know, put me up and whatnot. So they look after me really well, and, um, you know, you, you've got to do those events while you can. Um, as opposed to say just lifting at the local events in New Zealand, which is like, which is something I want to do, but you know, you, those opportunities are probably always going to be there. With it, with these other ones, they're not always going to be there. So, um, yeah, that's why I don't really lift in New Zealand too often. Gotcha. So the competition you just did, did you break the world record, or I was confused on the results. I know it was at least a, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it was at least a PR total, right? <laughs> Yeah, it was a uh, it was a PR total. Yeah, so um, yeah, I did break the world record. So I only, I got it by one kilo on my last lift. So nice. previously <laughs> it was eight eight thirteen, and I got eight fourteen. Um, I think the confusion came was um, when I broke the the deadlift world record on my last pull was it was, it was seven hundred and seven pounds, and I went to seven oh nine, and then the the guy came out after me. And he pulled seven eleven, I think, and um, and he got the world record deadlift, but he was well off on the total. So I got the total at seventeen ninety five. Nice, congrats! <laughs> I'm trying to talk in pounds so you can understand. Yeah, no, I'm pretty good with kilos usually. But I, I, broke, uh, yeah, yeah. I broke a record by like half a kilo, I think, in November. It's like a pound, <laughs> but whatever, man. Yeah, it doesn't... man. Yeah, like. like doesn't matter if like you win it's, by an it's, inch we're so lucky now. that it all just it all just came together like you know um like being able to break that world record or like where that world record deal of sat was like just perfect enough to beat the total as well so it sort of just works out like that sometimes you know yeah everything kind of just aligned and it's good to go <laughs> yeah pretty much man so how i guess just the basics like how did you kind of get into powerlifting where you were a different athlete did you play, you look like you probably should have played like rugby, but <laughs> like, did you play different <laughs> yeah, right, sports so, growing uh, up? Um, so man, like when I was growing up, like I was always like an active guy. Um, so the, the way I got into powerlifting was I was skateboarding one day actually, and I was just going over a ramp one day and I fell backwards and I actually broke my right arm. So like my bicep oh, and my humerus, bicep bone, and it completely shattered it. And then, uh, obviously, recovery. I was in a cast like this for maybe six weeks. And then I was we just started back at school again. So this is high school. I was probably around 
15 or so, and I had to throw a javelin at school, so it was just part of our like athletics test. And because my arm had been like this, I didn't have full extension. Yeah. Like I could only get my arm to like maybe there. And I, I remember running up to throw it, and I was just supposed to throw it just a couple of meters just to sort of register a score. <laughs> and just the last second, I was like, nah, just throw it as hard as you can. And I threw it as hard as I could. And literally, because of that force and my arm wanted to, to extend too much, I re-broke my arm again. Oh. And, um, yeah, so another six weeks in cast. And then mum, my uh, mum, she was like, all right, man, we need to get this sorted out. Like, you can't, you know, just keep damaging your arm. Like, mm-hmm. I'll get you a gym membership. So she got me a gym membership for one year. And um, and that was it, man. She, she got me into it. I was just hooked. I started just doing – I literally did upper body for one year. I trained, like, bench press. I'd stop, like, literally, like, six, seven inches off my chest. <laughs> and just doing that, I'd do dumbbell press. Like, I just wanted to press the heaviest dumbbells in the gym. And that's literally all I did. No back, no nothing like that. No legs, no squatting, no nothing. And I went to this other private gym um, about one year later, so when my membership expired. I moved gyms because someone else asked me to go to this other one to check it out. And the owner of the place, uh, Bevan McKenzie, and that's my, uh, this was this gym was called y and that's why my Instagram name is called BG y Gotcha. So that's that's what y Wade stands for. And um, I went in there and, and Bevan, the owner, had seen me bench pressing. And he's like, oh man, you're, like, you're pretty strong. And I think I was 16 at the time uh, by then. And he was like, we've got these uh, powerlifters in the gym, this, this guy named Spike. He benches like 220 kilo. You should go and train with him sometime. And then the next week, he organized me to go in at, I think it was like 6 o'clock on a Wednesday. They trained the same time every Wednesday for bench press. And I went in and met them. And then it all just took off from there. They, they We trained for a few weeks. Um, on the Wednesday, same time, they were just showing me a few things, you know, full range of motion, etc. And then they said, oh, we'll come do some deadlifts and, on Friday. And then uh, we squat on Mondays, you know, same time. Mm-hmm. I was like, cool, man, I'm keen, like, I'll give it a go, but I was I was actually pretty nervous to go and do it, you know, it's like, you know, when the strongest guys in the gym come and ask you to do something, it's quite intimidating, Yeah. and uh, I, so I went away on that Friday, I think, I went in a different time, I just went and did dealers by myself, uh, just to sort of see, you know, what I could even do, and if I was worth even going to do them, um, so I went and did that, started squatting on a Monday, and then I eventually, like, mustered up the courage to go and train with them full time, and 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 they uh they pretty much got me into my first comp, and then I, I was just I was just hooked from there, man. I was like it was all, you know, I was driven to go and do that. I didn't I didn't require them to be there, although well, they were still a part of a big part of my, you know, process moving forward and you know a big involvement. They were mentors of mine. Um, the passion was just ingrained in me from them, um, to for me to go and just achieve what I wanted to now achieve in this in the sport. So, gotcha. So. Did you always, like, did you just start with classic raw, or did you do any gear lifting? Yeah, I did, um, so back then, so this was 2008, was actually the first time I competed, and that was, there was only equipped, so it's always been uh, the IPF Federation that I'm in, but also in saying that, like, I showed up to the meet not having a clue about federations, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because that stuff's irrelevant, it was only like, that. that's where I started, so that's where I sort of stayed. And at the time that that um, that I was lifting, then that that was all there was. There was equipped lifting. So if you showed up raw or like with no equipment on, you still placed against people who were lifting in equipment. Mm. So basically, I remember I think my first two comps I did completely raw, and then I did maybe one with just knee wraps, and then I think from there is when I, you know, I invested in buying a belt and I bought a squat suit and I bought a bench shirt. And yeah, I started equip lifting because that's that was all that was there, and I wanted to be competitive. I've always got that competitive nature, yeah. so you know, of course, I'm going to go buy some gear and, and try and win bigger competitions. So that's what I did. Gotcha. So, what were your actual numbers at the first competition? <laughs> my my numbers at the first competition. I mean, so this was June 2008, and I think my squat was 182 kilo. I think. That's like so around pounds. 400 pounds. Yeah. I think I benched 132 kilo. Uh, that's like just below 300 maybe. And I deadlifted 215 kilo. And that was, so that's like high fours. 
and that was at 77 kilo body weight. Gotcha. So I will say, yeah. when I, I forget how I first came across you, but whenever I think of your name, I always think of like, just you deadlifting and just like screaming, <laughs> like, it's <laughs> almost like a maniacal, like kind of scream after, and it's like, it's very intense. So where did you kind yeah. of get, like, have you always been like an intense kind of athlete or like, did that kind of come out once you started lifting more and you got more comfortable with it? Um, no, I've, I've always been pretty, I guess, pretty aggressive with everything I do. Like, like I did play rugby and I played other like sports like golf I played for a long, long time. Um, I guess I've always just been determined to be the best I can be in whatever it is I'm doing. Um, and I don't know, man, like just, I guess with powerlifting, it's like, I always, I've always had so much aggression. Um, you know, I always get really, really fired up before like every single lift, like, you know, whether it was squat, bench, deadlift. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I always listen to music. Music gets me really fired up and I just start yelling and screaming sort of without even knowing it. Um, and yeah, man, I've just always really been like that. And yeah, I don't, sometimes I don't know I'm doing it at the time. Like sometimes it's worse than others. <laughs> but uh yeah man I, I don't know it just sort of comes naturally i certainly don't try and force it that's for sure all right so you had your first meet you had your results obviously you kept competing at some yeah. point you get to like the national level international level you get to a point where you're the world junior champ so what was kind of like at what point did it go from like being something you do to a point where you're like all right like i'm gonna be one of the best in the world at this like you know when did you kind of like make that turn? Yeah, I, I, I was always like really determined to. So first, it started out to be to get the New Zealand records and you know in, the, in my weight class or whatever. And to be honest, that proved to be pretty easy. I was doing that within the first you know year or two of, of lifting. So I was like, all right. So I'm like, I guess I'm pretty good, eh? Like I'm one of New Zealand's best lifters in this weight class or as a junior or whatever. So I was like, oh, I should probably go to the world champs, right? So 2011 is the first time I went to an IPF Worlds. It was a junior equipped Worlds. It was in Moose Jaw in Canada. And, um, you know, I thought I was actually pretty good at the time. And there was two other two other guys with me, John and Andrew. And they were lifting in different weight classes. And uh, I showed up. I got my ass kicked. I came <laughs> second to last. I came 11th out of 12 people. Um, and I think oh, there might have been one one other guy that bombed, so I counted as beating him, you know. And I was like, I, I was I was blown away. Like, so I, I was squatting maybe like 250 kilos at the time. This is in like suit and knee wraps. And this was in 74 kilo class too, so I was a weight class down from what I am now. But there was guys there that were squatting, you know. I think Malik Dernstein. Malik Dernstein was the guy who won that year, right? Oh, really? He, he was squatting 300 kilo. <laughs> He was benching, uh, you know, mid twos maybe, something like that. And he was pulling around 300 kilo as well. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, how are these guys so good? And I was like, all right, I've got to get to this level. Like, I've got to squat 300. I've got to do this. I've got to do that. And I was just really, really determined. But I was also realistic as well. I was like, all right, next year, I think the world champs are like somewhere in the middle of Europe. But I know the year after they're in the United States. So I said, right, let's miss next year, let's dedicate, you know, probably going up a weight class and um, just getting as strong as I can and let's try come in the top three. So, I like, I set out a really clear goal um, to myself. I sort of knew roughly what these guys would be doing and I just had these numbers in my head. I was like, right, I need to squat. You know, I've obviously gone up a weight class now. I was like, yeah. I need to squat over 300. I want to squat 700 pounds. I need to, you know, bench over 200 kilo. I need to pull 300 so I just went in with every single session, just with my eyes on that for a long time. Um, you know, I got better better lifting equipment because at the time, you know, you can add 20 kilos to your squat by changing your suit. Yeah. You know, you didn't have to get stronger. <laughs> so um, so I, I went through that phase, like where I went from looser suits to slightly tighter suits, you know, better knee wrapping techniques, um, you know, all those sorts of things. And then all of a sudden, you know, now, now I was in a position, I was heading away to to USA, it was 2013 Junior World Champs, where, you know, I was putting myself, you know, off, based off my training numbers, you know, in a position to be one of the best in the world or to win the World Champs. Um, you know, although I didn't win that day, I came second. Like, that's when I, I sort of knew, like, right, one day I can actually, I can come 
to a world championships and like and won this thing. Um, and th- and that was sort of when I knew. And it was also at that time though, about a, it was maybe six months later that Raw was coming into sort of into play. Off. Like, yeah, a, a couple of my good friends, uh, Hayden and Jono, um, who live around me, they were they were way more into the Raw side of things. And uh, and, I'm, and as me being so competitive, I always saw like mainly Hayden because he was the same weight as me. Like he would start squatting, you know, um, almost six hundred pounds Raw in the weight class above me, and I was like, man, that's, like, so good. Like, I would struggle to squat that, and I'm squatting, like, 700 pounds in gear. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And, and so so he just starts giving me a bit, of, a bit of grief, you know. He's like, man, start start doing raw, man. Like, we don't want, we don't care what you're doing in the suit. Like, we want to see your real strength. <laughs> like, come on, let's let's go, man. Let's do it. And I, and, and I just did it, man. I just started I, – I had some goals and equipment that I still wanted to do. Um, one of the main ones was just set out to get the junior squat world record. And I was like, right, well, I can get that, but I, I want to focus on uh, Raw as well, and I want to go to the Raw World Champs um, in 2014 because I saw the the year previous results, and I was like, oh man, I could win that. So I started training for both, um, and that was in 2014, and that was um, yeah, that was my first international uh, Raw World that year, and that was my last uh, international equipped World that year as well. So I sort of wrapped it up in that year, made the transition. Gotcha. So, um, like the first time, what was it like the first time you actually like were set on going after a world record? Like whether you got it or not, what was it like when like you were going into training every day? Like, I want this record. <laughs> yeah, it's like the training you're doing just becomes it almost becomes irrelevant because all you're thinking of is like, it was just the number that I was thinking of. Like, so for me, it was the squat wood record that I really wanted to get at this particular meet. And it was, I think it was, it was 355 kilo. Um, and that was all I was thinking about. So I was squatting 300. I'm like, this is nothing. Like I still had 55 kilos to this. And that, that was all like, I just became obsessed with, with getting that world record because I'd never had one before, you know? Mm. Uh, um, so I get to the point, um, and yeah, I guess I, I guess that's what it was. I just became obsessed with just trying to get a certain number, as opposed to just like going through the phases of training. It was just like I wanted to rush those points to get to the meet, yeah. so I could actually like you know put my name to a record or, or something like that. Did you get it the first time you went for it? No, nah, I didn't, man. I didn't. The um, I think it was the first time I ever attempted it was was December. 2013 and I, I went out I opened on 320 I think I got that I went 340 I, I got it but I missed it on depth and then I went 355.5 and just got buried just missed it so I was like oh I was, I was super gutted had a really bad meet like that that equipped meet but I, and I knew I had only one more chance to ever get it again so and that was at the world champs the next year because it was my last year as a junior Mm. And I and I also knew at that time that that was going to be my last ever equipped comp. So yeah, but at, but at that time as well, that actual same competition, that was my first international uh, raw meet. So I decided to do uh, an equipped meet and a raw meet in the same meet because it was a raw and equipped one. Oh wow! How'd that work out? Like were they uh, the same it was the ocean, weekend or? Yeah, so it was like it's a week long me and they had they had I think the equipped stuff earlier on and then they had the raw after so I think I left it equipped on like a Thursday and then I left it raw on a Saturday oh, and wow. it was and it was uh yeah so it was in New Zealand and it was the Oceania champs and I remember that comp really clearly because I was going up against this guy from Canada named Connor Lutz and um it was a, it was a you know really close meet uh, it sort of, it just sort of went down to the deadlift. So it wasn't really close overall in the end, but that gave me my first feel of like competing raw and like it being super competitive. Like it was actually just like it was really exciting to be a part of. But there was nothing to stress about. Like we weren't stressing about you know our equipment or how that felt and this and that. It was just like it was two guys going head to head, just like trying to lift as much as we could, and like the audience gets into it more because they can relate to it. And well, that's sort of how I felt anyway. And, and there was more raw lift because then there was equipped, so 
it sort of just felt really good and, and it just yeah, just sort of took off from there and that's that's where I got my first Raw World Records. Cool. So I mean speaking of head to head, you know it's gonna come up. <laughs> you versus yeah, John yeah. Hack, what was that like? Like the training leading up to that? Everyone was talking about it. It was a huge showdown that was coming. So what was it like training yeah. up to it and then actually going head to head? Yeah, the um the, the build up was uh it was a long build up because and it, it was sort of like a it was a strange one for me because I just so in, in December the year before, so December two thousand and fifteen, I did a just a training and mock meet and I went really, really well, man. I, I was doing heaps of travel. I just moved to Canada. Um, it was about four weeks into into me, you know, arriving in Canada. Mm-hmm. I went to the gym. First time I squatted three hundred kilo. I benched low two hundreds, and I, you know, it was my first pull over seven hundred pounds, all in uh, one session. So I had put a, put together a really, really good yeah. like training total. You were I was ready like, to go. man, yeah. I was like, this is setting me up for like a huge year, right? So this is going to be a massive year for me. I'm gonna absolutely crush some PRs, like you know, get the world record really, really high, total ten times body weight, all these things, right? And um. We started my first block, like, and when you, I knew at this point that you know there was going to be a you know hack and give showdown at the worlds, right? Yeah. And um, so my first block of training comes through. I was uh, working with John Paul at the time, and um, we we're building into the Arnolds, and I uh, get to the Arnolds, and I have just a really disappointing meet. I um I only got my third squat, so I only got my opening squat because it was the same weight. I got called on depth twice, so I got that. I got one. I got one, no, I got two benches, so I improved my bench wood record by like half a kilo, and I and I had a decent deadlift. I pulled, I pulled three twenty, just missing three thirty. So I had a I had a PB total by about one kilo because my squat was way back, mm. and and it was it was really disappointing because you know like I've been thinking about you know getting that three hundred kilo squat in the meet because I I done it you know a few months before, and to be like. 22 and a half kilos off of it because I only get my opener it was like it was pretty disappointing but I knew that I was I was stronger than that and then um, I think Hack I, I met Hack that day actually I met him at the Arnold's and uh, yeah so that's when all the all the hype sort of began <laughs> and uh, and yeah so we start uh, Worlds Prep and you know obviously we um, you know it was a linear type uh, approach to training so you know starting super light just Every sort of working our way starting, through yeah. week to week yeah, uh, that, that sort of approach, and um, you know, I, I finished. I finished really strong. I had, I had a PB like rep PBs all throughout it. Like I hit two seventy two or two seventy five for a three by three, and then I hit you know two eighty five for a two by two on the squat. Um, uh, bench was really if feel like I was hitting hundred for like multiple singles. I mean, maybe it was like three double actually. And then I hit, um, you know, 305 just like really, really fast. So I felt I was really, really well well prepared. I knew that Hack was um, doing really well as, as well. Um, but I think just some things on on that build-up and on just on that time in my life, um, there was just a lot of change that year for me. So yeah, I'd obviously moved, moved from... to Canada, right? And then... Yeah, man. So, so I moved from New Zealand to Canada. So that's a, that's a big change already. Um, I went from working at the bank full time, so I, I've been at the bank for three years. Um, I, my final year, I was a personal banker, so I went from that, like a secure nine to five, to uh, full time online coaching. So I was working online coaching. So I was programming for athletes. Um, you know, programming was on my mind all the time. Mm-hmm. Powerlifting was on my mind all day, every day. You know, you're, you're sitting at your computer, you're either writing programs talking to clients, talking to athletes, um, you're in the gym, you're coaching other guys, um, and then you've got your own training to do as well, which is not something I'd always been doing. You know, like normally it was, right, I'm at work, I'm doing some home lines for people, I'm selling some products, I'm sorting out this guy's banking, five o'clock comes around, I haven't even thought about anything yet. I'm like, right, five o'clock, it's time to go to the gym and just crush this workout. Like that's all i got on my mind as soon as that clock hits. And um, I guess it was like that time frame that was really, really hard on me mentally to, you know, to think about all this other stuff with powerlifting and then do your own training as well. 
And um, and I think that played a little bit of a role in me having a couple of those bad competitions, you know, the Arnolds and the Worlds. Because the showdown itself, I mean, we all know what happened. Um, I had a really poor squat. John had a really, really good squat. I had a, I came back and got a good bench in. Like, that was a clutch bench. So, like, for everyone that obviously hasn't seen it, like, so John went three from three on the squats. Absolutely huge PA. He squatted 298. I got my opening squat at 277. So he was 20.5 kilos ahead. Bench comes around. I miss my opener. Go up five kilos still, I think, and then I get my second. He He's already, he, so he's equal with me now. He, he gets 200, I think, on his third. And I make a big jump to go to 208.5 for the world record, which I needed to get. So then that gives me eight kilo, eight and a half kilos back on his squat. And then it all comes down to the final deadlift. He goes 300, 310. And he just got 310 too. Like I, I, was, I remember watching it. And he just got 3.10, and JP and I looked at each other. We're like, oh, I don't think he's got anything more there, which was sort of what we were hoping for. But uh, no, nah, he goes out, pulls 3.15, and then um, and then I come around. So I had to pull 3.27.5 uh, to take to get the win, to equal him, mm-hmm. and to get the to take gold. And uh, it just wasn't there, man. It just it just wasn't there. Deadlifts just weren't quite clicking that cycle like they were the one before. Like I. Like I said, I just missed 330 at, at the Arnold's, but 327, like I got it just above my knees, but it didn't even feel close. Like it didn't feel like what people may have thought. Mm. Um, I sort of just got it there, stopped and put it down, and, and I probably just wasn't in the right headspace to, like I, I didn't feel super confident on that day, and uh, that obviously led to me, you know, definitely the better yeah. lifter one on the day, that's for sure. So, yeah, man, that sucked, but that's what happens sometimes. Yeah, I know the feeling. <laughs> I just had my first yeah, bomb man. out last last month. The same me did John win that? He won the US Open, right? Oh no. Uh, John no. came. He came second. He got he second just, to um He just got out and pulled, I think. Yeah. Yeah, I bombed out. <laughs> you bombed out? I didn't I didn't realise you bombed out. Yeah, I got um I had like a slight glute strain, like upper glute and lower back strain. So I just couldn't yeah. lock my deads. Even in the warm ups, like I couldn't lock like five hundred. So I just opened with seven seventy, thinking that if I pulled that maybe I would be in the money. And it's yeah, like I yeah. got it to lock out, but it probably wasn't like fully locked out or it was like slight hitch or something. And then yeah. when I tried on the second attempt, I just couldn't get it. So yeah, oh man, that sucks. Yeah, I saw your squats and I, I actually I do remember you writing something about it actually. Yeah, because I hit yeah, it's- I hit 870 on my second squat, and it moved really quick, but I could tell, like, my glute and stuff, like, didn't feel right, so I skipped my third to hopefully be able to, like, not irritate it more, and then yeah. the bench, like, every single bench, like, my lower back was locking up, like, the whole yeah. meeting, it was not, it was a mess, <laughs> it was a mess for me, and it just didn't work out. Yeah, that out, sucks, but... man, because your training was looking really good going into that meet, too. Yeah. I mean, we also kind of all, I was just very beat up in training. I probably allowed myself to get a little too beat up. And I feel like yeah, yeah. between me, Larry Wheels, and um, and Andrew Herbert, we, prob- we were all seeing what each other were doing, so it's like we were really pushing ourselves to the max. And I probably yeah. just, we all just got a little too beat up, and we all ended up getting injured. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. Because Larry fell over on his second squad, didn't he? Yeah, he strained, he pulled his quad, so he went down. Uh, that was his third squad. I saw um, I saw you post that uh, picture of you with the IV, like you were getting uh, rehydrated after the <laughs> weigh-ins, obviously. Yeah, I got How it. do you find that, man? How do you find, uh, I don't, have you ever competed with a two-hour weigh-in? Uh, yeah, but not like, yeah. I didn't cut weight when I did, though. I don't think I oh, would. Yeah. Because the way I am, I usually have to eat a good two, three hours ahead of when I train. So I don't yeah. know how I would cut weight. I would feel just completely off if I tried to cut and then compete like an hour later. So if I had a two-hour weigh-in, I would just go out walk around weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it must be brutal, man. It looks like you cut a lot of weight. Yeah, this one actually went fine. I cut like 20 pounds, but because I yeah. went up a weight class... 
I was cutting yeah. from like 260 to 242 instead of like 240 to 220. So, yeah. I mean, it was a lot easier. The plan was actually oh, okay. to try to get under 230 to try to help my Wilkes. But um, I was like, my stomach was feeling really, like, uneasy. And at Boss of Bosses last year, when it was feeling like that, I ended up getting sick and I was, like, throwing up before, like, the night before Wayne's and stuff. So, like, I didn't yeah. want to push it to that point and, like, end up screwing up my performance. So I just stopped at, like, 237 or something. So it comes. I mean, for me, I guess I don't know. Twenty pounds for me is like very doable. Once you get over yeah. twenty, like twenty five, then it's like it, it starts to hurt a lot. <laughs> oh yeah, man! I can imagine. I, I actually, um, I was invited to the U.S. Open. They, uh, I think Gracie, she sent me an invite, but uh, obviously, I just yeah, this wasn't the right right year for me to do it. But definitely, if they keep doing it, I'll. Uh, we we'll have to see what's happening in a few years' time, or a couple of years' time at least. Yeah, I'm pretty sure she already announced that they are next year, at least. So, but yeah, it was a good oh, yeah. meet. It was a very well ran meet. Judging was like very strict, which yeah, I think it was like, like it. very necessary for this type of meet. So you don't yeah. feel you wouldn't want to feel like someone else like cheated you out of money or something. So I feel like it was very good that the judging was very strict, but it was a very good meet. So. Unfortunately, I didn't do well, but that's just how it goes sometimes. <laughs> yeah, man. I'm sure you'll be back next year stronger. Yeah, hopefully. I might even go back down to 220, I don't know, but yeah. But let's talk about, I guess, let's talk about progression. Because obviously when you start, it's like, yeah, you feel like every day you come in the gym, it's like you're just throwing pounds on everything, it's easy to PR, but at some point yeah. that progression stops, so... I guess at what point did you kind of start feeling like, oh, like I'm not automatically PRing every week now? Like it started getting harder to progress. Yeah, I think um, I think definitely last year. Last year was the hardest year for me to progress, or it certainly felt like it. So, like I mentioned earlier, you know, I had that a really really good end to 2015, and then when 2016 came around. Um, like the only time I was getting to PR numbers was in those final couple of weeks of um, of the training blocks, and they were only rep PRs. They were like never singles. They were never actual one rep maxes, right? Mm -hmm. So that that got really frustrating that I wasn't able to you know execute on the day, and that, and that could be for a number of reasons, right? Because that was the only time I was testing my you know one rep maxes. Um, so I mean. Obviously, progression slowed down a lot because I'm right at the, you know, the higher end of my weight class. You know, I'm setting the, the world records and just keep on keeping to. We're trying to bump those up time and time again, but um, yeah, man, it's just it's getting really, really hard now. Um, and it's just, uh, I think that one of the main things for me is is just that mental side of it as well. Like you imagine, or you see it a lot in other things. Um, if someone pushes the boundaries, like let's use Ray Williams for an example, right? Mm -hmm. I think it was the first man to squat 400 pounds, uh, 400 kilos raw, if I'm correct. But then he did that. He broke that barrier, and then everyone else comes through anyway. So like, now you've got two, three, four, five guys squatting there, yeah. you know. And it's like, uh, like in the, in my weight class, I, I normally just look at the IPF, right? Um, the, what what are the guys doing in there? What are the numbers they're doing in each lift? What are the totals looking like? Like I sort of don't have that. That, that there's no one's there hitting 830 or 840 or 850 in the total. So I'm sort of just continually trying to just beat myself. I don't really have someone yeah. to jump to and try and, and take down. So a big a big part of that mental thing that I had earlier was, you know, there's guys out there that are, you know, totaling 800 raw or they're doing 790 raw. Like at the time I was only doing 720. So I, like, I just had to force that progression. Yeah. Whereas now I'm like, all right, where can I find these little gaps in my – know technique or in my programming or or um or just how can i get stronger mentally just to keep pushing myself how to get better when there's um essentially no one that's you know out out totaling me right now yeah. it's easy to chase a number that's there already but to actually push the boundaries and like go for numbers yeah. that haven't been touched yet it's a completely different thing yeah so so it's so a big thing that i'm i'm really trying to work on now and that um, is going really well with my programming is that 
I, I'm now consistently hitting um, like heavier, bigger singles. Um, so I'm getting more and more confident in, in actually coming in week to week, uh, time and time again, and just actually being able to do that. Um, so that's really growing my confidence. Um, you know, I'm just starting to really get a bit more numbers obsessed again. So just just keep getting into my head. I'm like, right, I need a total eight thirty. I need a total eight forty. I need a total eight fifty. I'm just constantly thinking about that sort of stuff again, and I'm taking my focus off off of anyone else, and just just putting it all back on myself and, and some of those numbers, and and just just keep trying to get better, man. And like that's that's the way I see me progressing. Um, you know, sometimes it is easy to get caught up in what others are doing. Um, and and lose track of yourself. So I'm just really just trying to refocus on myself again. And and I know if I can really just believe in what I am doing, then I'll be able to just keep pushing those boundaries um, like I have been able to do in the past. All right. So I'm guessing. I mean, obviously, like a ten times total is probably something you're looking at because you're in the 83s. You're trying to get yeah. to 830, and like you said, 840, 850. But um, even further down the line, like, do you plan to stay in the 83s? Do you want to go up? Like, what are your like future goals? Say, like five years down the road. Yeah, man. I think I think if we look five years down the road, I think I'll definitely be going up a weight class to the ninety threes or the two hundred fives. Um, and I think that I think honestly, like if I if I think about some of the training I've done, maybe like 86, 87 kilos. Um, you know, when I did that big uh, that, that big uh, in gym uh, training session in December. I was around 86 kilos then, so I know that you know if I do go up a weight class and actually commit to it, that I, I think that that is the weight class you'll see my best ever lifting in. Um, and whether you want to compare that to Wilkes or or whatever it is, I think that that is the weight class that's going to be for me. Mm. I think right now I'm just too arrogant to leave the 83 kilo class <laughs> to um, because I haven't achieved my goals, man. Like I, I said, a, you know, a while ago, like I need a total 10 times body weight and. That, that's just the number, man. Like, at the end of the day, it doesn't actually mean anything. And, and it's, it's not even, like, super impressive. Like, it's not like it actually, I'm going to achieve anything or get any better because I've done that. Like, at the end of the day, I, I do just want to lift more and more weight. Um, because essentially that's why we why we started training. You know, we, we want to get strong and then we realize there's weight classes when we get a bit more advanced. And then we start going for titles and numbers and yeah. inside <laughs> weight classes. And it's like, man, like... I can just get stronger if I put on some body weight, hopefully, you know, hopefully, mm-hmm. and um, and just lift more weight overall. So I think I think what I need to do is I need to actually sit down and be like, right, this is going to be my last comp as an 83 kilo lifter, and it's commit to going up a weight class. And I've sort of said to myself and, and some of the people I know um, that you know at, at Worlds this year, if I can total 8.30 to 8.50, so somewhere around that that middle mark, which is only six weeks away, by the way, um, that I'll go up a weight class after that. Uh-oh. All right. Yeah, so... We have that but, on record. <laughs> it's on record now, but but, but in saying that, I, um, I, I think that I, I need to go back. I need, to get, I need a head-to-head against Hack again. I think that has to go down. They can't not go down again, and um, that's what the people you know, want. <laughs> it's what the people want too, man. I want it. The people want it. Hack probably doesn't give a shit, to be honest. Um, but you know, I, I really want to do that, and it depends what his plans are. Like, if he goes up a weight class or whatever, like, I mean, that's probably what I'll do anyway. But if he wants, if he's going to start eighty threes, and if um, if he's able to lift the world champs next year, like if he's able to go to Canada and lift the IPF worlds. Then, uh, then who knows? I'll probably stick to that weight class, and, and we'll try to set something up really big, and have another head to head. But um, that's what I'd like to see. Um, but if he's out of the equation, then it's probably just going up a weight class, man. Gotcha. Are there any um, like, do you have any go to videos that you watch for motivation of like your favorite lifters, or are there any songs that you have to listen to right before you lift? No, I, honestly, I don't, man. Like, I, I don't, um, like, I mean, I've got some songs that, it's like anything, though, you, you listen to the same song time and time again, it just it gets old and you move on to the next one. Like, lately I've been listening to Marilyn Manson oh. and, um, <laughs> and like, the Notorious B.I.G., the, the uh, Duets album, and those have been the main two albums that I've been listening to while I'm training. 
Um, I don't know why. Um, also, some corn. I've listened to the, like that sort of music, which is what I listened to years ago. Mm. So it's sort of like it's come back around, and like I listen to that again. But as far as um, like motivational videos and things like that go, like I don't know, man. Like I've never, I've never really been into. Like I've never had to watch a video to get fired up and go and do something. Like it's always been pretty like self motivated, I guess. Like, you know, I, I've always had that routine. It's like, right, five o'clock comes around. It's, it's just time to go to the gym. Like, it's always on my mind. Like, all throughout the day, I'll be, like, thinking, like, as soon as five o'clock hits, it's just time to go to the gym. And that was sort of my own motivation. So whether, whether you want to call that motivation or that's just discipline or that's just a goal you've got and you need to go and achieve it, that's going to get me fired up enough just to go and do it anyway. And, um, yeah, I've never had to rely on really outside sources to get super fired up. All right. Um, I think that's a good amount. I think we're good. <laughs> Definitely learned a lot about you, which is good, and I think people enjoy this. Um, any sponsors, anything you want to talk about? I know you do online coaching and programming. Yeah, man. So, no, I do, uh, I've been doing online coaching now for about 18 months or so full-time, uh, which is going really good. Um, I'm pretty much full with clients now. I work with around uh, 40 clients at a time. At the most, just because I do weekly check-ins and all that sort of stuff, mm-hmm. um, where it's not just um, just I send them a program and that sort of it. So that keeps that keeps me busy. Um, got some uh, squat bench deadlift line uh, coming out soon, so that's pretty exciting. Um, we've got next week. I've got the A7 and uh, squat bench deadlift collab coming, so that's going to be dropping soon. Nice. Have you um have you seen the A7 shirts? Do you have one? I don't have any, but I've seen them. Like, I train with people that have them. Yeah. But I've never worn one. Only because, can you wear them in competition? No, right? No, you can't, man. You can't. Yeah, it's like the only reason why I yeah. don't. Because I wouldn't want to, like, I wouldn't want to wear it in training and then feel in a worse position on comp day. Like, I've yeah, seen them, yeah. and everyone I know that wears them, like, swears by them. They love them, so. Yeah, bro, they... They are really nice. Well, let me know, man, if you want me to get you one out, I'll, I can get you one out. But, um, yeah, the good thing about them, because they're one, they one of my main sponsors, man, and um, they're really good along with SPD, but um, A7, the shirts, they are good, but, like, it's like if you travel a lot, like if you ever, like, leave your home gym, hmm. like this is when it came in real handy for me, it's was like when I was just traveling. Bars and... Yeah, and, and if you go to the gym and there's no chalk around and, and things like that, commercial gyms, like I like it was life saving for me when I did about five or six weeks travel um, last year. Like I just be able to chuck that shirt on, didn't need to worry about anything. Go to gyms that don't allow chalk. I can actually just get my workouts done. Um, so they they are really good, man. I really really love them. Eh? Cool. But yeah, man, that's about it. So a few things coming up, but uh, nothing too major. All right. Well, I look forward to seeing all of your results. Good luck at Worlds in what did you say six weeks? Yeah, man, June 23rd is the day I live, so that's a Friday. It's over in Belarus this year, so, um, man, just want to take gold and just put up a big total and <laughs> just, just see what happens from there, man. I'm pretty excited for it, though. Cool, man. Super excited for it. You got to get that 8.30 at least. <laughs> oh, no. I thought I was going to get 8.30 this last meet, but uh, I don't know what happened, man. The bench just went to shit, so. Yeah, it happens. I feel like the yeah, cut probably affects bench the most. Like when you cut weight. What's that? I feel like when you cut weight, it affects bench the most. For whatever yeah, reason. I, I think it definitely plays a big factor. Like you just you just feel like you lose the power in the chest or something. I don't know, like you might lose a bit of, little bit of uh, size around there. Yeah. And you just a whole lot of power goes from there, eh? So uh, we'll, we'll dial it in, get it right for worlds, and uh, and just put a big bench up, man. All right. Sounds good. It's been a pleasure. All right, man. <laughs> Yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I really appreciate it. Good to chat with you, man. You too. I'll see you on Instagram. (laughs) All right, buddy. Catch you later.